Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comment of the Week for October 6th through October the 12th, 2020. These are the very best comments from that time period. The honorable mentions for this week go to Art Bell, Afro Gamer Dude, and Shanana Tims. The bronze medal goes to Logicost. Miami have done very well. Butler and Spoestra have worked a miracle with what they have. But what they have isn't good enough if they don't play a perfect blend of unconventional defense and three-point shooting. They have also lost Dragic, who is literally their floor general. He's gone. Should he risk a premature return, going against both LeBron and Rondo at half strength? No. Bam is hurt. Butler is probably on the verge of being hurt. And the Lakers have too much on their team to continue to fail. Right now, it's 3-2. Miami grinded out a close win. I predict that the LA Lakers are going to make necessary adjustments and Game 6 will be a Lakers victory. The real third option in LA is between Howard and Rondo, as funny as that might sound. Forget about Kuzma. His development seems to have stagnated and he could be traded. He could be trade bait at the end of the season. Playoff Rondo is a thing. And Howard is a three times defensive player of the year. People are sleeping on the huge impact of Howard. If I were a cynical man, which I am, I would say that the double technical on Howard and Butler was planned. Howard will continue to be targeted because he is the linchpin. But look, Robinson and Hero have to shoot great splits. Miami has to have lots of stops and low turnovers. They need Butler to drop a 50-piece. They need Bam to assert himself on the game. But the Lakers can just put LeBron out there for 48 minutes the next game. They can rotate Rondo, Kuzma, and KCP, KCP to keep the perimeter locked. And they have AD and Howard in the paint. That's too much firepower. I almost guarantee that the Lakers close it out in six games. Miami is running on fumes now. And the depth slash experience of the Lakers is going to decide it. Butler's Miami have done a Herculean job. But there's no more toothpaste in the tube. It's over. And it was ended in six games. When I watched it, I kind of felt like Miami was running on fumes. It kind of felt like that, you know. And Butler did give an amazing effort. It's kind of weird looking at Miami right now. Like, what do you think about Miami right now? I know there's a lot of injuries, but they're just, it doesn't seem like they're the same team. I don't know where they are on the standings right now. I think they're, they're of course, below Philadelphia. They're below the Heat. They're below, I think they're, I don't know where they are, fifth, sixth? Um, and you know what? They were not high seated last year. They came back, you know, they, they shocked the world when they beat the Bucks. you know, they weren't even really supposed to be in the finals. So anything can happen, but I just feel like they should be really deflated with a lot of other teams in the East to see Harden go to the Nets, which was a game changer. Um, but it's weird. You know, I was thinking about making a separate upload, but I don't think I'll have time. Uh, Logic cost. I don't know if you saw what happened, but see what happened with Kevin Durant. They took him out, then let him play, and took him out again. So that was some some crazy stuff that happened in that recent game. And if he was in there the whole game, I don't think they would have lost. I think pretty much the Nets. The only the only way they don't get to the finals is if there's an injury. You know, because they have too much offensive firepower, or they don't make any adjustments. You know, at the trade deadline. They'll get some rim protector. They'll get somebody. It might be a has-been. It might be who's, who knows who it will be. I've heard rumors of they might go after Andre Drummond. I don't know. They'll get somebody for defense. And it'll definitely put them in the, you know, uh, let's just say they don't care about money at this point. Okay, it's they're all in. But you know what? They still got a couple years, as long as those three stick together, though. And Miami has a really bright future because... Most of their stars are pretty young. So, yeah, I mean, even if Miami doesn't go all the way this year, they still got a bright future as long as they, you know, keep that crew together. You know, they've got some great players. Bam, a hero, Butler, you know. Scrappy, scrappy team there. Thank you, Logic Cost. The silver medal going to come to us from Heavy Metal Gamer Show. What if you get a BJ for buying a broad a few items off the dollar menu? Laugh out loud. That's, that's not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Um... 
I, I can't remember, can't recall what led to this comment, but you know, okay. <laughs> to be honest, I've took women out for dinner. We went to nice places, but sometimes it's like, where do you want to eat? And they say a local burger place, sometimes a Wendy's, etc. It's like, sounds good. Laugh out loud. Hell, there are times, yeah, let's just order a pizza or something. Of course, that is mainly if we have been drinking enough, and it's not a good idea to get behind the wheel. 10K, uh, and I can quit my real job? Hell yeah, I just need 6K. Time to shill like a motherfucker. Uh, you were talking about how uh, there was an idea that once you get to 10K on YouTube, you can quit your real job, which is kind of kind of hilarious when you think about it. Uh, depending on the video, I can usually get one done in three to five hours. That's not counting game footage. That I will go a few days or longer at an hour or two each day and get enough for the video. Sometimes I just work on them here and there, especially if I'm working ahead. But anyone that thinks 20 to 30 hours is the lowest amount of time some ma is on some major drugs. I think Nintendrew said 44 hours. Yeah, my ass. I work early mornings, sometimes as early as 1 a.m., usually 3 or 4 a.m., and work as early as 9, uh, work to 9 a.m.? I can't remember you said, uh, I can't, you said you, you work, I don't know. Well, it's like, what, an eight-hour shift, something like that. But most of the time, uh, almost 11 a.m., starting midway through the next month, it will be 1 a.m. start times regularly through the holiday season. Granted, I will work ahead on a lot of stuff on your YouTube channel, other than uh, the Let's Play stuff. Before that, things get busy, but even then, I'll come home and spend a few hours working on stuff here and there. Some of these YouTubers spend late nights working on something that they are going to release a month or longer later. I don't need flashy, fancy videos to enjoy them. I get it. Some people do. But give me something straightforward, no BS, etc. It can't be that hard. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot, Heavy Metal Gamer Show. And, you know, there's this pervasive lie with a lot of these channels. And it's a deeply protected lie. And I called it out. I called Nintendo out when he was trying to say and explain to me how long his uploads took to make. And I kind of broke it down. I watched his uploads. And I said, no. 44 hours? No. No. Not one of his uploads. And you talk about flashiness. And I can actually do it for you. You know, as a YouTuber that knows exactly how long it takes to make certain types of uploads, um, you know, commentary uploads, they don't take that long. I think I referenced the other day where I'm like, you know what, I had like about 20 minutes to respond to an Art Bell comment and upload something like that. Well, it didn't take anywhere near 20 minutes, you know, just to uh, record myself talking, to put it over, um, to put it over a static image, to edit to export it and everything. And the thing is, when Nintendo came by to break down his uh, his uploads, it was hilarious when he talked about how many, many hours the thumbnail took. And that's where I just like, you know, he didn't know me that well. And, uh, you know, poor guy. I really did hit him with the critical satire. I did. I did, admittedly. But when you try to tell me that your uploads, like there's no there's no way to streamline that. You know, that's going to take you 40 hours to make a 10-minute upload. I'm like, imagine that. And I use a reference like, you know, imagine if you had a real job. A real job. And your job every week was to upload one 10-minute video talking about video games. And you had to explain to the boss, well, you see, here's a breakdown. All right. Exporting the video, that's going to take like 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Me, you know, trying to fumble on the desktop to try to find the images and, oh, recording the gameplay. I got to play the game for, you know, 10 hours and I got to cut this out and everything, you know. And he's like, but it's 10 minutes long. Yeah, but you see what I got to do is I got to like take certain parts out and I got to, you know, put them together in such a way. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Okay, dude, four or five hours. I'm not giving you more than four or five hours to talk for 10 minutes about this video game. Do it however you want to do it, but, you know, four or five hours maximum, dude. Maximum. Okay, chop, chop. Right? When you have nothing but free time, you can spend as much time as you want. Right? You can. It can take a week to make an upload. If you make it take a week, right? 
But, you know, uh, if you got to deal with deadlines, uh, I, I just it's a it's a weird like um like what's the uh, what's the word? I can't find the word. But it's just weird when you see these professional YouTubers, these professional YouTubers that, you know, they brag about, you know, they're professional YouTubers and all of you don't understand what takes, what it takes and everything. Meanwhile, there's people that actually go out and work for a living, come home and do this as a hobby and kind of expose the professionals. I'm doing that thing with my fingers. The professionals, we expose them and actually, you know, what it really takes to make entertaining uploads about, well, you know, talking about video games or movies or whatever. Thank you, Heavy Metal Gamer Show. And the gold medal comment comes to us from Nacho Gamer. Is this your first uh, gold? Might be your first gold medal here. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, at least on comment of the week, I think it's your first gold. Nacho Gamer says, seriously, Radical Reggie is a life lesson. I do like his videos, but watching his latest videos, you can see that he definitely has issues. If 2020 has uh, made us think about anything, it's that you have to be prepared for whatever life puts in front of you. I think he's a good person with a sweet personality. However, this guy is not Wood, Metal Jesus, or any of the big YouTubers that made a lot of money. With that being said, what's the future for this old man? Because let me repeat, he is old. I used to watch this YouTuber, Rain Bean. He is nice and his videos were entertaining. However, the guy decided to become a full-time collector and reseller. As time passed, you could see how his life was deteriorating. He gained a lot of weight and increased in the same proportion uh, of his game collection. He was one of my inspirations to get out of the hobby or at least limit it. You could not have every single game franchise on Earth or beat every single RPG available. At least not without sacrificing either your health, family, or money, or all of them. For how long can you keep making YouTube videos about old games? There comes a point when you don't get any new subscribers. For how long you can keep making videos about top video games for Halloween or how gaming saved my life videos. If he keeps that lifestyle, he would be making videos, he would be making videos about how diabetes destroyed his life. Life is about balance and someone like Reggie doesn't know about it. If anything, we should be thankful to him to show us what happens when you take things too far. At least Metal Jesus went to Japan. But this guy doesn't even have the money for gas. And he still talks about having the switch on the go. Go to the toilet, maybe. At least Wood got the money. The trip to Japan. The girl. Game Chasers got a movie. Angry Joe got millions. And Angry Video Game Nerd got to meet Macaulay Culkin. But what did Radical Reggie get? A bunch of lame Game Boy games that will probably make you bling by, bling by 50. Blind. Oh, bling? Sorry, sorry. No, you should be sorry. You know, ah, you know. This is a rare error in your gold comment. Make you blind by 50 by looking at that horrible screen. Yeah, the Game Boy games. I'll start out with that, right? The Game Boy, the original Game Boy, with the green screen, okay? Who the fuck still wants to play that shit? Like, who the fuck still wants to play that shit in 2021, right? We've moved along. I can understand the appeal of some retro games, but, like, really? Like... <laughs> I think the makers of the original Game Boy would be like, really? You still, people still fucking playing this and worshiping this thing? But yeah, you talked about how, towards the end there, um, there's certain people. There's Wood, there's Metal Jesus, there's the Game Chasers, there's Angry Joe. And these people definitely have their flaws and we criticize them. But I guess the least thing that you could say is they actually did get somewhere. But I would also argue, I would also argue that where they are is not going to be something that ultimately can be sustainable in many cases. Like, for instance, is there going to be a need for a 50 year old angry Joe to be angry and yell four hours? It, you know, I think it'll kind of move on to, you know, angry Billy or who is never going to, you know, it's like about fads. I'm not saying he's not going to maintain a lot of his audience. He will. But, eh, you know, with some of these acts, and it is acts, by the way, Nacho Gamer. Like you said, it's acts. Like, how long? How long can you keep it up and hold it up until, you know, people like me kind of point it up and point at it and say, you know what? You're building your entire life around this. And uh, I would say running out of gas. 
running out of gas is what I see happen on the Metal Jesus Rocks channel, you know? Because, like, if you take Metal Jesus Rocks and you take him away from the crew, already he's getting a lot of comments like, well, when's Radical Reggie coming by? You know, Radical Reggie, for what it's worth, I mean, he actually has an interesting personality sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, like, compared to, like, a Metal Jesus, yeah. Uh, but I, I I have no ill will towards someone like a Radical Reggie nowadays. It doesn't seem like he's doing a lot of e-begging for gas nowadays. Um, but there's a difference between, let's say, someone that is drinking expired soda and drives a car with, like, bullet holes in it and, and bald tires and everything. I would say there is a difference between someone like that who clearly has some problems and issues that can't seem to control their game collecting addiction that doesn't have a bigger picture like of where they want to go, um, at least with a wood hawker and a metal Jesus and types like that, a John Hancock, they know where they want to go. They're clearly aware of what they're doing and um, versus Radical Reggie, they're actually you know, at different times, like the museum thing, is they're actually scamming people. Like, so they are bad people in a variety of ways, especially a wood hawker. But I guess what you're saying here is, compared to Radical Reggie, at least, like, they know they have a certain direction they're going. But then my retort to that would be, how long can they keep that up? How long can they hold that up? And, you know, when it's over... What will they have the fall back on? 